Nick's with us in Jacksonville, Florida. Hi, Nick. How are you? Hi, Dave. Thanks for taking my call. I'm very well. Sure. Good. How can we help? Um, well, uh, let me give you a little info. I am 35. I am divorced. Uh, I just finished my associate's degree. No alimony, no kids. Um, but I do have 33000 in uh, credit card debt, 32000 in student loans. I just started my first semester of my bachelor's degree. I'm very excited about that. And my goal is to finish my uh, education without taking any more student loans. That's good. And uh, so right now I make about 4600 a month net, and my outgoing is 3800 um, And I, I've cut my expenses where I can. Mm -hmm. I'm paying 500 a month on my credit cards. Mm -hmm. Since I'm still in school, I don't have to pay student loans yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm paying about 700 a month out of pocket for tuition. Mm -hmm. And... My car payment is four twenty five a month. Mm -hmm. Now, I owe ninety four hundred on my vehicle, mm -hmm. and it has a trade in value of about seventy four hundred. Mm -hmm. But I got an offer to trade it into the dealership at an unspecified above value. Um, I was looking at similar vehicles, and it looks like I could lease a similar vehicle for two hundred a month. I've got two years left on this six year loan for my car. Should I? trade it in and lease a vehicle for two years so that I can no. put an extra $200 towards my debt? No, no. I'd stick with what you got. Yep. It, it's okay. it's a real tough binge, but it's a short it's a short pitch. And, and your worst yeah. case scenario is you got to pick up some extra work while you're in school, which is going to be very strenuous. But if you could kick your income yeah. up $1,000 a month, it changes all this equation. Yeah, yeah. And Nick, you're doing a great job. I love how you broke down your man, numbers. Yeah, you, you, you know, you know exactly where, you where you are. are. That's yeah. a big deal. That, that's huge, man. So I, I agree with Dave. Stick right there. Get a little bit more income. You're going to be all right, bro, in two years. Yeah, this is tight. And you know where you are, and you know what you got to do. And so you're looking at options. But no, I, I, here's the thing. The right financial decision almost always is harder in the short term and better in the long term. The wrong one is always better in the short term and worse in the long term. And most people do the second one. That's why they're broke. So, and that's where this cat this falls in that category.